And now, deep thoughts. Hey, it's Matt Schantz with the Deep Thoughts Podcast, and the whole point of Deep Thoughts is to help you in fostering deep faith and a deep discipleship to Jesus. And in this brief episode, I want to talk to you about evangelicalism. I recently read a headline stating the evangelical church faces a state of emergency. Another headline read, how the pandemic radicalized evangelicals. I read some fascinating statistics about evangelicalism in Canada and in the United States. And and it comes as no surprise, but essentially evangelicals believe, but like 80% of them believe like they're a great help to society and about 18% of society uh, think that they are. And now, now that doesn't mean all that much because our, our, there's great differences that that we would have in terms of what makes a good society and what leads to its flourishing. And we come from different places on that. And so we would expect that, that we might have much to offer there uh, and the society not being aligned with that. That's, that's fair, but here's the challenge. Here's what I want to talk to you about when it comes to evangelicalism, ask people what they think of when they hear the word and they're more likely to refer to politics culture wars, bigotry, or even things like conspiracy theories and moral failures when it comes to leaders in the church and, and parachurch ministries. And, and so um, we could argue that those are, you know, the media's characterizations of evangelicals, that it's not really fair. But if we're brutally honest, those characterizations aren't entirely unwarranted. And so that's led a few prominent Christian leaders in recent years to wonder if the word evangelical, evangelicalism, whether it should be abandoned, like, like maybe it's no longer a useful clarifier, right? If, if it doesn't actually describe uh, posit- what we might see as positive things or true things about what an evangelical is, um, is it even a useful term anymore? So let me just lay my cards on the table. I, I want to define evangelicalism in this episode and advocate for uh, the continued use of the word. But more than that, I want to advocate for robust evangelicalism. Uh, So let's define the word and and talk about its history a little bit. Um, Evangelicals are a subgroup of, of Protestant Christians, and evangelicalism came into existence as a renewal movement in the church. And so the reason I want to advocate for a clear definition of evangelicalism is because I think a call to evangelical renewal is necessary today. And I find the best way to define evangelicalism rather quickly is to focus on four pillars. There's more, but let's focus on four pillars that have historically defined evangelical identity. Uh, These four pillars have sometimes been known as the evangelical quadrilateral or the Bebbington quadrilateral because a guy named David Bebbington wrote a book called Evangelicalism in Modern Britain, a history from the 1730s to the 1980s. Provocative title. (laughs) Interesting title. Um, But he actually... um, names these four categories or pillars or the quadrilateral, which is like essentially means four sides. And uh, so it's sometimes referred to as the Bebbington quadrilateral. Um, but it is a helpful set of four. Here they are. The first is the Bible. The evangelicals are known for um, believing in the authority of scripture, right? Committed to the Bible, committed to teaching the Bible and believing in its authority in our lives. Um, the second point of emphasis of evangelicals historically has been the cross, um, believing that um, really the Bible emphasizes the finished work of Jesus Christ, what he accomplished on the cross, and that that's at the heart of our theology and our message. The third pillar is uh, conversion. If the Bible uh, and the message of the Bible and the message of the cross are believed they should lead then to hearts and lives being transformed, being changed. It should lead to seeing people come to faith, being converted. 
Um, the Greek word euangelion, where we get this word evangelical from, literally means gospel or good news. And and when we receive that good news, it should change our lives. And evangelicals have emphasized the need for conversion and the belief that it comes um, through believing, receiving um, the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And the fourth pillar is activism, uh, meaning two things that kind of... Um, there's some crossover here, but but essentially by activism, meaning um, evangelism and a real strong commitment to missions, um, to going out and telling people about Jesus and this saving work, the saving work of Jesus and the message of the gospel. And also meaning by activism, um, volunteer, volunteerism and um, seeking moral reform in society, trying to participate in society in such a way that leads to its flourishing, its renewal. And so being involved in local communities, being involved more broadly. And so those are, um, there's certainly more, but those are the four points of emphasis that evangelicals have historically been known for. And I think go a long way in defining what evangelicalism actually is. Now, interestingly, a little bit more history here. In the late 1800s, there were a group of liberal theologians who started to attack the fundamentals of the Christian faith, primarily at an academic level, um, saying things like the Bible's full of errors. It's not God's word. And people are not fundamentally sinful. They're fundamentally good. Um, and the bodily uh, resurrection of Jesus didn't actually happen. It was merely symbolic or an illusion. Or Others said Jesus didn't have to die for our sins on the cross. He was basically a victim rather than laying his life down. And so in response to this in the late 1800s and early 1900s, a number of Christian leaders rose up to defend the fundamentals of the Christian faith. And they wrote a series of documents on the fundamentals of Christianity in response to liberal theology. Can you guess what the movement became known as? It became known as fundamentalism. And here was its point. It was to provide fundamental responses to the key points of contention in its day. Fundamentalism was a response to liberal theology and certain narratives of its moment, key fundamental responses to those. And that's what evangelicalism comes out of. Evangelicals center around a commitment to the gospel, a commitment to the Bible, a commitment to Jesus, a commitment to making him known. And so fundamentalism and evangelicalism came into being to provide clarity and renewal. And, and one of the beautiful attributes of Christianity for me, in my mind, is it's not so much about rejecting things so much as it's about redeeming things. For example, Jesus didn't come to reject the lost, but to seek and to save the lost, to redeem us. And so that's actually a mark of Christianity is it redeems broken things. It gets us back to the garden, the garden of Eden before the fall. Part of the Christian mandate is actually to see renewal take place, take broken things and fix them or redeem them. And so I advocate for redeeming the words, fundamentalism and evangelicalism, not rejecting them. And the reason is because they represent a rich history of renewal in the church and broader society. And those things are needed as much as ever. And so to be clear, listen, I, I rarely use the word evangelical to describe myself these days because I think it muddies more than it clarifies. Or I, th I think it just flat out gives people the wrong impression of, of me and, and what I'm for. But I have hope, though, that that can change. And it will change as a renewal movement happens among Christians deeply committed to the essence of the Christian faith and spending our lives primarily on those causes for Jesus. And so, it, listen, as we conclude this little episode, if, if fundamentalism refers to a focus on key fundamentals of the faith that are being de-emphasized at a particular moment, then, hey, I happily call me a fundamentalist. But if fundamentalism refers to a pharisaicalism, that is all law, no grace, and hyper judgmental of those who don't see things precisely as they see them, 
then absolutely not. And if evangelicalism is an interchangeable word for white Christian who's known for right-wing politics, conspiracy theories, culture wars, and bigotry more than they are for Jesus, then, then count me out on evangelicalism. But if evangelicalism is once again a renewal movement, emphasizing the four pillars that we just walked through, then listen, I'm all in. And my hope and prayer is that we see evangelicals become known for the Bible, the cross, conversion, and activism again. As the emphasis of our lives, let's redeem these words as we go about living as disciples of Jesus who want to see Jesus redeem our hearts, redeem our culture, and redeem the world. My name is Matt, and I'm an evangelical Christian committed to living out and teaching the fundamentals of the faith. Next up on the podcast, I talk with Dr. Nancy Piercy about her new book, The Toxic War on Masculinity. Thanks for listening to Deep Thoughts. I hope it helps you in fostering deep faith.